Okay, welcome to uh, Lunch and Learn Wednesday, talking about uh, business district membership campaigns. Uh, my name is Jacob Falkenberg, and I'm so happy that you're all here to um, learn about this very important topic for business associations. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, but feel, feel free to uh, chime in uh, as you have questions uh, um, throughout the presentation. Okay, can everybody see my slides? Okay, great. So as I said, we're talking about business district membership campaigns and uh, why are uh, membership campaigns and strong membership important for business districts? Well, for a lot of districts, it's your main source of revenue. That's gonna give you the funds that you need to uh, do your events and marketing and activities. Um, that comes from membership dues. Uh, it's also where you recruit your volunteers from and where you recruit your board from. So the more members you have, the more help you're going to get uh, to be able to do the things you want to do and uh, the more resources you're going to have on your board. Uh, large membership base also leads to credibility for your association. So if you are doing advocacy work, um, you know, the city is going to take you uh, more seriously with a strong membership as well as you can build membership easier the more members you have. We'll talk a little bit about that membership cycle later. How can you measure strong membership? Well, it's not just the percentage of businesses in your district that are members. That's definitely one of the most important things, but there are other ways to measure uh, membership um, than things you should be thinking about when you're going out and forming a membership strategy. So one is membership diversity. So does your membership reflect the business mix of the district? Do you have businesses who are members from different parts of the district? Um, do you have a, um, a diversity of racial and ethnic backgrounds for business owners in the district? This can also be uh, seen on your board and how your board is made up. So does your board represent the business mix, geography, and racial and ethnic uh, breakdown of the district? How engaged are your members? Are they participating in your programs? Are they coming to meetings? Are they coming to mixers? Do they want to be involved in committees? Um, are you doing things that are actually providing a benefit to them? And then obviously revenue. Are you bringing in enough membership revenue to do the things you want to do and be a sustained uh, organization? Okay, so how do you build a strong membership? Well, there's no easy way, but the, the main thing you want to think about is building strong relationships uh, with district businesses through ongoing engagement. So thinking about membership as a year round thing where you're constantly engaging with members, both existing and uh, potential members that you want to join. So businesses who might be new to the district, uh, businesses that may have been previously involved but aren't currently involved. Um, or people that just might not know about your association at all. So keeping that uh, conversation going, keeping uh, communication um, solid and uh, consistent with everybody in the district is super important for building your membership. So membership is momentum. The fewer members you have, the less engaged the ones that you do have are going to be, and that's going to lead to less revenue, less credibility, uh, less board members, for you to actually get the work done. Because of that, you'll have less ability to provide, provide benefits. And then the fewer benefits you have, the fewer members you have. And it's kind of a vicious cycle. So you want to keep momentum going throughout the year and think about increasing your membership year over year. Because the more members you have, the more appeal your association will have. And then that will bring in more revenue, more credibility, uh, more volunteers. Uh, which will eventually lead to providing more benefits, bigger events, more events, uh, more successful marketing campaigns. So you want to be a contender. Well, running a business association is a lot like running a business. Know your customer. You know, who are the businesses in your district uh, and what do they want? What, what would be helpful for them uh, as businesses and what services can you provide? And that's the product that they want. So the product that you're providing are the benefits uh, that the association is providing. 
And then you got to deliver the goods. So not only making the promise of coming up with some great ideas, but also being successful, you know, not uh, thinking about things uh, that are too difficult to actually pull off, you know, building up to that point, starting small and eventually growing um, your, your member benefits um, to be super impactful. You also want to find the right price. So what can businesses afford or were they willing to pay to uh, be members of the association? But at the same time, uh, you want to bring in enough money to do the things you want to do. So what's your budget look like for the year? Um, and finding that sweet spot between, um, you know, what people are willing to pay and what's realistic uh, to bring in um, the, the revenue for your budget. And then finally make the sale. So we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit later of, um, you know, rallying your board to uh, go out and, and actually um, sell membership to the businesses in the district, get them to come on board. So what it takes to do a, a membership campaign is first and foremost, you need to have a contact list for the businesses in the district. And there's no, um, unfortunately, there's no list of businesses that the city provides. Um, so you have to kind of do this the old fashioned way. And that requires uh, internet research and then also boots on the ground, you know, going to business to business, talking to business owners, talking to the staff at businesses to try and figure out what's the best way to get in touch with business owners in your district and putting all that information uh, in uh, one place that's getting updated constantly as business, new businesses are opening, businesses are closing, ownership changes, uh, contact information changes. Uh, you wanna have um, you know, a list that's uh, being updated at least on a monthly basis. So when it does time, uh, come time to launch a membership campaign, uh, you're ready with the most uh, current list. Strong relationships, obviously, that's the hardest part and that takes the most work, but that's the most important thing too, is you know making sure businesses know who your uh, business association is and what you do, um, that's uh, incredibly important. And you'll, you'll do that through um, uh, some membership materials that we'll talk about. You wanna have uh, valuable benefits. So what services are you providing? What's the, the return on investment that a business gets when they decide to join the association? Professional approach. So you wanna definitely have a professionally designed uh, materials that you're handing out to help uh, businesses understand uh, what the association does. You want to have you know, a professionally designed website. You want to look like a legitimate organization that people uh, can trust are going to deliver the things that they say that they're going to do. And then finally, a three-month campaign. So a uh, membership campaign will take about three months uh, from start to finish. Um, and we'll talk about the pieces that go into that as well. And then you want to have tracking and payment systems in place before the, the campaign starts. So uh, being able not only to accept a check, if that is uh, what's preferred, but also um, having something set up on PayPal or Venmo or Square, where people can pay via a credit card, making it as easy as possible um, for businesses to sign up, uh, just so um, you know there's no hurdles involved. Okay. So what doesn't work is expecting a business list to fall into your lap. So there's, it's going to take some work. The board's going to have to go out and start uh, putting together the information of what businesses are currently in the district and how do we get a hold of them. Sending an email and waiting for members to knock down your door, that doesn't work either. People are so inundated with emails these days that a lot of the times that gets just brushed off to the side. So you want to have a multi-pronged approach when you are reaching out to businesses in your district. And then vague or mismatched benefits. So a lot of the times, even if you are successful in communicating with the businesses in your district, if your business association isn't doing anything impactful that businesses see as a benefit to them, uh, they're not going to they're not, they're not sign on. So you know, revisiting your benefits every year to make sure that you're still providing uh, something that is uh, effective in uh, boosting revenue, bringing in foot traffic, marketing and promoting the businesses in the district. And benefits, uh, let's talk about that for uh, a little bit. Uh, that can be uh, all kinds of different things. It really depends on what the businesses in your district want. So this can be a signature event, like a street fair or a holiday tree lighting, 
something that happens every year around the same time um, that you put a lot of your uh, resources into uh, to draw people into the district. It can be advertising, marketing, and district identity. So um, ad campaigns, it could be, um, uh, you know, banners or uh, district maps, uh, member networking and education. So these are the networking events that a lot of districts do on a monthly basis at different businesses throughout the district. Um, just giving the businesses in the district opportunities to connect with each other, learn from each other, share resources, um, but also providing them with some education. So uh, Venture Portland webinars are a great resource for the businesses in your district. Uh, but you can also invite guest speakers to come to uh, your networking events and your board meetings uh, to provide a more intimate um, uh, customized training for the uh, businesses in your district. Advocacy is also super important, especially this time of year or this uh, point in, in our city where there's so many issues affecting small businesses. Uh, what is your uh, association doing to um, advocate for the businesses in the district? And that can be anything from, you know, advocating around uh, construction in the district, uh, the safety, it can be uh, any issue that's affecting your district. Um, you know, you have a collective voice. And it's definitely important to use that, uh, at least to try to uh, help to benefit the businesses in the district. And then finally, the Venture Portland uh, benefits that we provide are always available to the businesses in your district as well. So different businesses um, take advantage of different benefits. And that's an important thing to kind of think about as you're looking at your benefits list. Um, what types of businesses are in our district and do the benefits that we offer match those businesses. So you got, you might have retailers, food and beverage, uh, service and professional businesses. All three of those kind of take advantage of ben benefits in different ways. Uh, so are the marketing campaigns that you have um, promoting one type of business over the other? Is a everybody able to participate? And that also includes health and wellness businesses, home-based businesses, industrial and manufacturing businesses, uh, those are a little bit harder. You know, they don't typically, uh, they're not able to take advantage of the, your typical marketing campaign, like a passport promotion or something or a street fair. Uh, so how do they get engaged? How do they get involved? Um, what does that look like? Is that a sponsorship? Is that a specific uh, meetup group for that type of business? Uh, and some uh, business districts have also started uh, creating opportunities for property owners in the district. Um, you know, creating a group for property owners to get together or inviting property owners um, to board meetings so um, boards can kind of communicate what their concerns are, maybe about filling a vacancy in the district or um, other things like that. So first thing we're going to do is a breakout activity called Strengthening Benefits. And we're going to think about um, your district and what are your existing benefits and what is one benefit you can strengthen and what can you do to strengthen it? And then you can also think about what should a new benefit, uh, we, what is a new benefit we should offer in the new year uh, and who should that serve? So what types of businesses aren't really taking advantage of your benefits right now? And who do you want to target as far as uh, a business that might be able to take advantage of a new benefit? And then brainstorm just two uh, new benefit items. So once you figure out which type of business uh, you want to serve, uh, what are some new benefits that you could offer to them? So I'm going to stop sharing my screen for just a second, and I'm going to give you all five minutes uh, to kind of break out into small groups to talk about, yeah, what are you all doing right now and what can be improved? And then what uh, are you going to offer in the new year to a certain uh, type of business that might not be in, engaged and involved in taking advantage of uh, benefits at this time. So I'm gonna break you all into uh, breakout rooms and then I'll come back in about five minutes. Okay, welcome back. I hope you are all able to have enough time to think about uh, your benefits. And does anybody have anything? Uh, let's start mm -hmm. with an uh, existing benefit that you can improve. Did anybody come up with uh, something that they could improve upon what they currently offer and they wanted to share. And Instagram was the main thing I took away. Instagram spotlighting and engagement. 
Yeah, that's a huge one these days. Now, um, Regina, do you have somebody specifically on your board that is in charge of updating the Instagram or is it kind of a collective effort? Uh, what's what's uh, Northeast Broadway currently doing there? There's a main person who is a business owner there who's on the board. I've taken over that temporarily as their um, member consultant hired on through the grant. So I've taken that on for the duration. And, and uh, I've, done, inc I've increased how many people were following us and how many people were following and engagement, but um, not utilizing it probably to the best of our ability to, um, like someone said, they will spotlight certain businesses, even if they're not a member to encourage engagement. Yeah, that's definitely a challenge, you know, building your following and also, you know, coming up with content to share on a regular basis. You know, to be successful with Instagram, it has to be consistent um, in order to stand out kind of in uh, everybody else's feed. Does anybody have anything uh, that they want to share with Regina about uh, how they've improved their association's Instagram or any tips and tricks? I like creating reels for any of our new bits member businesses and creating member business spotlights and um and also any of our events that we have in our district we make sure that we're connecting everything from our website to our qr codes to our uh, our content that we make to the posters that we have on the street everything is interconnectable and then eventually finding some way to look into the analytics of what everybody's seeing. And in our business association, we definitely believe in Instagram. We definitely think that most of our community members who see our advertising are funneling into Instagram. Now, Ross, when you're creating reels or doing posts about um, businesses in the district, uh, are you pulling content from their feeds or are you soliciting content? Are they sending you anything to post or are you just going out to the district and just capturing stuff as you're, as you're walking around? Uh, get your own content to create because it's yours and it's your business associations. You are allowed to use it. Of course, you obviously ask, hey, am I allowed to take all this video and am I allowed to share you then? And of course, they're going to say, yeah, because they want they want the highlight, but it's for me, just great outreach opportunities to be able to go do that. And for me, I've gotten, we've been able to like meet our membership goals this year. And one of the main selling points for me is if you become a member, I promise, we promise we are going to highlight you on Instagram in some sort of way fairly quickly. Yeah. So it's a great way yeah, to get in front of businesses, you know, show them that you're actually you know, doing stuff on their behalf. You know, actively okay. out there uh, promoting them, uh, yeah. which is, I think, really important for businesses to actually see uh, the benefits that they're, you know, looking for. Okay, that's a great one. Um, let's talk about uh, new benefits. So does anybody have um, a type of certain type of business in their district that's not currently involved? And did they come up with an idea for uh, a new benefit that they could offer maybe this year? Um, to kind of cater to those those businesses. This one's a bit harder. <laughs> Our group didn't really get as far as identifying the new benefit other than just recognizing the challenge of engaging those businesses that fall out of the retail food and beverage, you know, categories. So, um, more industrial in nature, manufacturing, um, that kind of thing. Yeah, so that's definitely a challenge is mm -hmm. yeah, industrial businesses that are in a, a non-industrial district. How do they kind of plug into what you're doing? Yeah. Um, and, you know, that could be sponsorship opportunities or, you know, creating a special um you know, meet up just for industrial businesses to kind of get together to talk about, you know, the issues that specifically affect them. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the times, you know, it's in order to figure out what the best thing would be is, you know, you have to talk to those businesses and ask yeah. them, you know, what are your struggles with, uh, you know, how can we help? Um, and that can be you know, in-person conversations or surveys or, you know, as you're putting together your benefits lists. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of thing. 
use that information to help. Anybody else uh, have anything that they came up with for new benefit? Okay. Well, continue to think about it. You know, that's a, a good activity to take back to your boards as you're kind of brainstorming the year ahead and what you want to offer to the businesses in your district, uh, figuring out, you know, how to fine tune things and not necessarily doing exactly what you did last year as, you know, the state of our city continues to change rapidly uh, year, year over year. So making sure that you're still relevant as an organization. Mm -hmm. Unless anybody had anything else they wanted to share, I'll get back into the presentation. Okay, here we go. Okay, where? Okay, so next we're going to talk about dues. Uh, a lot of uh, districts uh, struggle with, you know, how much should we charge? You know, what's what's the the exact right amount of money uh, that businesses can afford, but will also allow us to do what we want to do. And really, it's an art, not a science. You know, really, the main thing to think about here is you want enough revenue to deliver your benefits. Uh, a lot of districts are successful using a sliding scale. So this could be, you know, uh, based on number of employees or business type, you know, and maybe a nonprofit or a home based business pays a different rate than um, a brick and mortar. Um, you know, maybe some, uh, it could be zero to five employees, five to 20 employees, 20 to 100 employees um, scaling up, whereas larger businesses are shouldering more of the load and they can uh, afford to pay more. And we saw during the pandemic, a lot of districts started offering a pay it forward option where uh, businesses that were doing well or wanted to be uh, seen as good stewards of the community could elect to pay the membership dues for a business that might not be able to afford it. Um, so that was actually really successful, giving businesses an opportunity to um, be good members of the community. Um, and then also offer incentives for joining early. You know, you want people to join at the very beginning so they can um, be a part of uh, volunteer opportunities. So you want them to obviously join before you have your annual meeting uh, so you know who's eligible to join the board, uh, who's eligible to join committees. Um, so making sure to have uh, some sort of activity uh, that's right around the one to two month after you launch your membership campaign mark where people, you know, in order to take advantage of that activity, they have to be members. So here at Venture Portland, for instance, uh, our membership um, starts in January. And then in February, we release our spring grant applications. And in order to apply for those spring grants, you have to be a member. So it's an incentive to get people to sign up early in the year. Obviously, you, you might not offer grants to your businesses, but it could be something as, as simple as, you know, we have a map. And in order, in order to be on the map, you have to sign up to be a member by a certain date. So that's kind of the concept. So looking more at dues, this is just kind of an example of how it breaks down and what to think about when you're, when you're uh, setting your dues. So first... Think about your major benefits. So that could be street fair, map, mixers. And then look at what's the cost to provide those benefits. And then you look at your current membership. So we currently have 50 members. They pay $100 a year. So we're currently bringing in $5,000 a year in uh, membership dues. However, we have you know $10,500 in costs for all of our activities. So next you want to look at your projected revenue. So what are your other revenue streams? It could be advertising, it could be vendor fees, sponsorship, uh, grants. How much money are you bringing in? So subtract that from uh, you know, the total cost to provide your benefits. Then subtract the current membership. So you, you, know, you want to think that you're at least going to get everybody that you got last year. And then look at, okay, what's the difference? And what percentage do we need to grow our membership at the same dues rates? Or if we don't think we can grow by that much, how much do we have to raise dues by to get to our total cost to provide benefits? Okay, so we're getting ready to start the membership campaign. We gotta get our house in order. The things we need to think about are our membership year. 
So Venture Portland's on a calendar year, January through December, but some districts start at different points in um, throughout the year. Uh, depends on your annual meeting date, really. You know, you want to you want the campaign to start at least a couple of months before your annual meeting, so you can get people to sign up and to become members to attend that annual meeting, and then also get elected onto the board. Um, and then once you have those things figured out, you can figure out your campaign start and end date. You want to have your dues figured out, uh, your prorate policy. So that's, um, you know, for instance, if someone joins uh, late in the year or halfway through the year, what does that look like? Do they pay the full rate if they join halfway through the year? Um, do they pay for the next year in advance? So a lot of uh, districts will do that. Um, you know, you can join halfway through the year, but you have to pay, you know, the, the following year in advance. Um, so what's that look like? That's going to come up throughout the year. And then your business contact list. This is, you know, kind of your your most valuable asset. And is, is that updated? Um, are people, uh, is there anything else we need to see? Uh, is, or is there anything missing there? And then your payment systems as well. Um, so making sure that Square, PayPal, or Venmo is set up. Uh, who's going to be handling the money? Who's in charge of making the deposits at the bank? Obviously, your treasurer uh, needs to be involved in kind of the workflow there. Who's checking the mail and who's communicating with uh, members as they sign up? Okay, so your membership packet uh, traditionally has looked a little bit like this. You know, you want to have a solicitation letter. Generally, this is from the president, and it talks about uh, all the things you accomplished last year and what you're excited about in the coming year. And then you wanna have your benefits sheet. So that is gonna kind of have a bulleted list of all the things you're gonna offer throughout the year. People can expect to get uh, uh, as a ROI for their membership dues. And then you wanna have a membership form. So that has the different levels of membership, how people can pay, uh, put in their contact information for you know who, who the best contact would be, their, and, and maybe information for their business that goes on your website. So you want to have a, a method to collect that. A lot of districts will also do kind of a year in review kind of infographic that you can kind of see there uh, towards the bottom right if you have somebody who's handy with design. This has kind of been the traditional uh, way of presenting all the benefits um, to businesses in the district. But in recent years, districts have gotten more creative. Um, so this is a pamphlet that St. John's, uh, St. John's Boosters have developed. And uh, if there's anybody from the Boosters here, this might be an older pamphlet that I just kind of had uh, on my on my computer. So I apologize if this is out of date, but I thought this was really slick. Um, so it's a trifold pamphlet that people can easily take around to businesses. It looks very professional. You know, you look like a real organization that is dependable and legitimate. And it has a lot of great information about it. It's got an about us section um, that, that talks about um, who the boosters are and what benefits they provide. Uh, and it also talks about their accomplishments, uh, grants that they have received, uh, the social media uh, increases that they had. I, I love the, the uh, events posters here. So it really helps people to visualize you know, all the things that the association does throughout the year on behalf of the businesses. There's a section for advocacy here um, at the bottom talking about you know, what, how they've worked with the city to improve uh, the district and that sort of thing. Uh, there's also uh, membership levels. So that, look, you can see they have uh, six different tiers of membership. So kind of a, uh, not a one size fits all, but uh, how everybody can really afford to uh, participate if they want to. There's a map of the district as well. And then a QR code that'll take you right to the website where you can learn more or um, sign up right on the website. So they've done a great job of kind of providing all this information in a very small package, but it's easy to digest and easy for you know a board member to just walk into a business, hand it to a business owner, and the business owner immediately gets an idea of all the great things that you're doing. Okay, so what does a membership campaign look like? Once you've got all your house in order, um, if you build it, they work, will come. Unfortunately, Kevin Costner lied. Um, follow up is critical when it comes to a membership campaign. So just sending this stuff out is not enough. You've got to ask more than once. And a lot of it has to do with finding the best messenger. 
So uh, when you're thinking about who on your board is going to be uh, soliciting and making contact with businesses, um, who already has relationships with certain businesses? Um, who is part of a specific industry that might be able to relate to another similar industry if it's someone you haven't had contact before? Or it could be geographical, you know, um, assigning board members to reach out to businesses on their block, you know, people that they may have seen in passing, they might not have a relationship with them, but hey, we're, you know, right next to each other. Uh, I'm a part of this great organization. Here's everything they've done for me. And uh, it can benefit you too, since you're right here. Uh, also, avoid guilt. Invoices don't always work and avoid uh, leaving voicemail. So if you are going the phone route, uh, make sure you talk to somebody. You know, don't just try and leave all the information on a voicemail. Um, try and try and get a hold of somebody so you can have a conversation. So this is a a, a graphic that just kind of helps you visualize what the membership cycle looks like, and that that gets back to what I was talking about: how membership is a year long process where it's, it doesn't just start and end with the membership campaign. Um, you're consistently thinking about membership recruitment throughout the year. So if you look at the bottom left, that's when the campaign launches. And then you've got a couple of months where you're doing those asks, you're welcoming the new members. Um, and then you get to the point where you have your annual meeting, you do your board elections. And that's typically the end of the campaign, but it doesn't end there. You're, you're consistently welcoming and engaging members throughout the remainder of the year. Um, and then a few months later, you're starting to plan your campaign all over again. And you come back right to where the launch is. So it's, it's consistently engaging with members throughout the year uh, to keep them involved. So when you do make the ask next year, um, it's an easy one. You know, they, they've taken advantage of the benefits. They know what to expect. They know how to get involved, um, and it's not like a cold call. So a membership campaign uh, typically looks something like this. Uh, the first month is planning, so working with the board and any staff to come up with the strategy, putting together the membership materials, what benefits you want to offer, how much your dues going to be, uh, all that good stuff, updating the contact lists. Month two, you're sending out that membership packet, whether that be, be via email, via snail mail, both, um, you know, really doing the hard work of, of getting it out into the businesses in the district. And then uh, that third month, tracking, following up and acknowledging. So anybody you haven't heard from, you know, going in person, making a phone call, sending a follow up email just to say, hey, you know, I wanted to make sure you got this, wanted to see if you had any questions. Uh, and then also acknowledging those uh, that have renewed, making sure that they know that they're in good standing. So you should have a tracking method uh, for this to you know, ensure that you know who's paid, who hasn't, who was a member last year that hasn't signed up this year, that sort of thing. Month four, that's going to be your annual meeting. So hopefully at that point, the majority of your members have paid up. Uh, they can attend the annual meeting and uh, be nominated for board seats. Um, during that time. Month five, um, how did you do? You know, did, did membership increase? Did you meet your membership goal? Um, what went well? What didn't? Celebrate the success of the, the campaign. Uh, it's a lot of work for the volunteers and for staff. Um, so, you know, you want to recognize that. And then throughout the entire year, you're delivering benefits and keeping in communication with the members. So setting membership goals looks a little something like this. Um, by a specific date, you wanna have a certain percentage of businesses in the district as members. 25%, um, depending on the size of your district, is a good starting goal, but long-term, you wanna shoot for 50 to 80% of businesses in the district to be members in order to be a self-sustaining organization. And this can be done typically around 10 to 20% increase each year in membership. And that's what you want your goal to be. You might not always hit it, but it's good to have a goal to work towards. You also want to have targeted business sectors and nodes. So if there's a specific part of the district that's not engaged, you know, maybe putting in a little bit more effort to get uh, them uh, involved or specific to business types. Uh, as Jeff was saying, you know, let's say the industrial businesses are in the district, but they're not engaged. 
uh, you know, making it a point to maybe do those in-person asks there um, where, you know, an email might not actually be as successful. Solicitation is all about building the relationship, you know, having that conversation with the business, you know, going into the business and saying, you know, I understand your business. Here's everything our organization has done over the past year to help your business, but we can't do it without your support. Uh, but also talking to them about, you know, what are their challenges? You know, really um, listening as well, because even if uh, they don't come on board, you can take that information back to the board and use that to inform uh, next year's benefits. You want to have quantifiable ROI. So, you know, a lot of that has to do with tracking the things that you've done. Uh, numbers always speak really highly of, of success. So if we had an event, uh, how many people came to it? Uh, how much revenue did it generate for the businesses in the district? Um, you know, how many people saw this ad campaign that we did? How many mixers did we do throughout the year? That sort of thing. Um, specific numbers. Also, the benefits sheets, you want to have that readily available. Uh, whether that looks like a pamphlet or a one pager, something to hand over to the business so they can um, have you know a really complete picture of everything the organization does. Testimonials also help. So uh, if there's a, a business in the district that's like the business that you're trying to bring on board, uh, having them talk to the business and talk about their personal experience, either uh, working with the association or taking advantage of the, the, the benefits and activities. And then a payment mechanism. So is that a, a, a square card reader? Um, it could be you know, a QR code, as we saw, that take you, takes you to the website. Uh, what's the quickest, easiest way to get them to a point where if they decide they do want to join, um, they can kind of do it right then and there. Make the ask, but also set a deadline. You know, we'd love to have you on board, but we need uh, you to commit by this date because you know, we've got this plan, that sort of thing, just so it's not a situation of kicking the can down the road. So talking about uh, the different types of engagement and how successful or unsuccessful they are, an email with no follow-up typically gets a 1% to 3% return. Um, once you kind of look into following up, uh, maybe with a mailed hard copy of membership materials, that's when you get into around 50% people will uh, renew. Phone, obviously, more personal. You're going to get 25% commitment when you talk to people over the phone. And then when you're standing there in person, that's when it's really hard for them to say no. Um, so you're going to have the most success with in-person asks. Obviously, you know these take the most time. So you want to be strategic to where you're doing the in-person asks. Um, but they have the most impact uh, for some of those businesses that you know, might be an anchor business that you want to have uh, involved for a while, but just haven't been able to get through to. As I said, there's no silver bullet. Most successful districts have a balanced uh, approach relationship building, and everybody has a different uh, preference as to far as how they want to be contacted. Um, so it's about finding you know, people where they're at whether it's in person, online, or in their mailbox. Thinking about rallying the troops. So a membership campaign is a ton of work and one person can't do it alone. So this is gonna take uh, a couple meetings of the board. A lot of districts might uh, have a membership committee specifically tasked with creating these materials and going out and soliciting membership. But uh, you want to make sure you have help through the volunteers. Um, so making sure to create a timeline so people know that there's a sense of urgency here. You want to have, you know, the majority of your, uh, your members by your annual meeting, and that should be within, you know, one, two, three months of the launch. Sometimes providing scripts helps. So if someone hasn't actually done this work before, we have uh, some sample scripts that I'll send out later on um, that you can use. And it's just a great way for people to kind of make sure they hit all those talking points and how they, you know, you don't want to rush into making the ask. You want to make sure that you're, um, you know, listening first and, and uh, having a conversation before, you know, going out and, and uh, making that, uh, that ask. You also want to capitalize on existing relationships, as I said, you know, so pair, um, you know, uh, similar uh, industries together, ge uh, geographies together, people that already have existing relationships, um, that's going to save you the most time. 
encourage friendly competition. So, you know, if you have a membership committee, um, maybe the person that uh, recruits the most businesses gets a prize. Um, you know, making sure to track that and, uh, you know, follow up with people, see how they're doing, see if they need any support, uh, coach them if they're having uh, struggles, cajole, inspire, um, but most importantly, celebrate their success because it's a lot of work. You know, mostly we're, we're working with volunteers who are busy running their own businesses. So definitely recognize um, that with, um, you know, maybe uh, give somebody a bottle of wine, or a gift certificate. Or, you know, it's just even recognizing them at a meeting for all their hard work. Okay, so that was a lot of information. Um, we have about 10 minutes left for questions. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open the floor to whoever uh, wants to share, whether it's, you know, a struggle you're having with your membership or a success that you want to share with the group as, you know, a strategy that you use. Um, that was really helpful in uh, bringing in uh, businesses. So you can chime in, use the chat, raise your hands. I'll say something. I have a question. Has anybody yeah, been yeah. successful? In, yeah. Has anyone had a successful um, run at getting more home businesses involved? I feel like we we do great events, but we don't get a lot of like booths that want to participate and people who are just, you know, artists at home type of thing. And so how, how have you guys reached those communities? Hmm. Have you seen that the businesses are listed on Portland Maps? Just like looking up in the area, you mean? Yeah, like I mean, I don't know if you're trying to figure out who has home businesses in your neighborhood or not. But if Partially you are, yeah. if you go to Portland Maps and click on the home, it'll list the business that's um, registered there. Thanks, Shannon. Ross. Looks like Ross has his hand up. I have a question on a separate situation, so I'll let everyone else answer to that. <laughs> Um, yeah, before we move on to that, does anybody have anything they want to share around home-based businesses and getting them engaged? Um, Jeff, I know that Foster was doing some work in that area. Uh, I don't know if recently you have any success there, but is there anything you want to share uh, with your work there? I mean, I, I guess a couple points. We, we've had pretty good success engaging home-based businesses. Um, I think some of that's a product of having some interesting overlap between the neighborhood associations and the business association. So there's just a lot of engaged residents of the area. Um, and then in the past, the business association used to host a uh, freelancers happy hour. Um, so that kind of evolved into just anybody who has a home-based business. And it's been a while um, since those have taken place, but I feel like that sort of laid the groundwork for some of that that deeper engagement. And we actually have, I would say half of our board, you know, is made up of home-based businesses. If anything, I feel like we're trying to get more representation from brick and mortars um, on the board. So yeah, our engagement with those businesses is pretty good. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ross, what's on your mind? I was just wondering if any other districts uh, have had any success with tiered membership prices, whether you have different tiers for pricing, maybe for BIPOC businesses or for home-based businesses or for businesses that have more than a certain amount of employees or maybe a food cart. So uh, just curious if anyone had anything to comment there. Um, Raleigh Hills Business Association, when it first started, that's what we did, was a tiered membership. And I was absent for a while, a few years, and then it just went to one uh, flat fee. And a lot of us are home-based businesses in mm -hmm. Raleigh Hills Business Association um, yeah. or small, small brick and mortar. I mean, that are, you know, we don't, we, we're kind of unique. We don't have a core of uh, businesses like you do in Belmont or Hillsdale or Multnomah or anything like that. We're just, we're, you know, we're known for six corners or kamikaze corner. And so, um, but I don't know why the tiered thing stopped, but we've done, we just do a flat fee. Does anybody in our, in my organizations here have any other ideas about that? Why it changed? 
I don't remember why it changed, Bev. Uh, I do know that we, we uh, voted on it in the board, and that's been years, uh, a couple of years ago now. Oh, probably more than that, I'm guessing. But yeah, yeah. okay. I yeah, think okay. it had to do with an accounting nightmare. Uh, okay. That was part of it, yeah. Interesting. I think it made it a lot easier for our volunteer bookkeeper to keep things straight. And then we went to the, you know, new member by the month. That yeah, was you got it. So as you join now, like it, if you join in the middle of the cycle, when you go to the membership form, it gives you a price. So it says, you know, membership is blah, blah, blah. Full price is in June. But if you join in September, this is your your uh, your membership fee. So your prorated amount. Yeah, a lot. Very easy. Very clean. And, and then people and then problems. people weren't waiting to join. Yeah. Okay, right. So I just pulled up the, uh, the St. John's uh, membership pack, and you can see here that they actually have six tiers of membership uh, based on uh, number of employees. So home-based right. businesses pay 100, and then uh, when you get to 3 to 10, that's 125. And it goes all the way up to 2,500 for businesses that want to sponsor, um, you know, their beautification efforts and stuff. So, you know, they St. John's kind of has a mix of, uh, a, lot, a lot of small businesses in the core, right. but some larger industrial businesses kind of in the outer lighting areas. So I think they wanted a way to to get them engaged, but also, you know, those businesses can afford to pay a lot more. Right. Uh, Tanya's here with us. Tanya, is there anything you want to share about uh, how St. John's kind of came up with this tiered membership um, kind of level system? Yeah, you know, we um, were at 100 forever. And so we decided that, you know, we just left it where we still have that opening price point. And then with trying to um, romance the bigger guys, um, we got up to the 2,500 because there's, you know, so much to get fixed. And we, we aren't real sticklers. Like if a business, even though, you know, they probably should be paying 125 or 200, it's like one of those things where it's like, if they put down a hundred, we just let them keep to what they feel comfortable giving. Um, and, you know, we actually, did that. we had a bus driver um, business actually, you know, show up at one of our events and handed me a thousand dollar check and said, hey, we want to be a part of it so we can, you know, table for your businesses. And we're like, yay. So um, it, it's just kind of worked. But, you know, 99% of our businesses uh, stay at the 100 to 125 um, level. But yeah, and uh, there you go. But it's. It works well. We've never had anybody do the 2,500 or the 500 yet. Good to give the uh, option to if uh, that ever comes up, though. So, yeah, it's, it's always it's always good to have the option, even if people aren't taking advantage of it. Um, I think there's there's a, a level for everybody at some point. OK, so we just got about two minutes left. Uh, Laura, I saw your hand was up. Do you, did you still have a question or do we cover cover that? Okay, uh, I, I was just gonna chime in really super quick on the home-based businesses. We did um, a successful um, tour where we actually went into one of the businesses and set up tables. And so that essentially was like a, a tour and uh, just reached out to some of the people that went to Jenny Sacred Grounds and she's a copy shop and people dropped in and I called them and I said, would you be interested in tabling and telling us a little bit about your home-based business? And one of the vendors that came is the bread box and he's doing phenomenal. I mean, he, his business has just grown. And so he's very excited and uh, we're going to work on a bigger uh, tour and have several vendors there and they will all be home-based businesses and it was a great networking opportunity to just reach out to some of our businesses that are coffee shops because people come in hey i'm delivering an order or i'm making this and they're a great resource if you want to do something like that that's a great idea laura thank you so much for sharing that um you know giving home-based businesses opportunities to have you know brick and mortar presence if, if only for a day uh can be a huge benefit to offer 
Um, so, you know, maybe organizing these uh, every quarter or something like that um, would help to bring on home-based businesses if, if they had access to opportunities like that. Okay. Well, I see we're at one o'clock and I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, so we are going to wrap it up, but I want to thank you all for being here. And as I said, I'm going to follow up with an email with a lot of great uh, information, resources, samples, um, as well from some of the stuff we discussed. But if there's anything in particular um, that you need or you're, you're wondering about, uh, let's keep the conversation going. Uh, feel free to reach out to me via email, jacob at ventureportland.org, and I can uh, kind of assist anyone. Yeah, Regina. Um, I'd love to meet up with anybody else who's interested for like lunch or even another Zoom meeting to talk about what's working and what's not working for you. I don't know if anybody is interested in meeting outside of this. Um, I'm not sure how to get information to each other. Yeah, Regina, why don't you uh, drop your email into the chat? And then when I send my follow up to everybody, I'll include your contact information. And um, yeah, they can reach out to you if you want to uh, get together. Aren't you the one that was doing social media, Regina? Um, I was uh, asking questions about how people were improving their social media presence. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, we're just getting started on that. We have a gal that's um, a photographer and she's. She goes, oh, wow. Know? We got to have videos. We got to have pictures. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get in on the short, the short clip videos. That's important. Yeah. I like what Ross was talking about. So, um, yeah. The, yeah, I think that we need to, um, spotlight people. I mean, we've been talking about it, but anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Jacob. Thank you. Jacob. Thank you.